Good morning, children of God. This is Judy Jacobs, and I'm coming to you today with uh, a message from the Lord that He has given me from the beautiful state of North Carolina. Today, again, I'm going to talk about the Bride of Christ because there's so much misunderstanding in the body of Christ about the Bride of Christ. And He's coming for her very soon. And she has to enter her chamber and make herself ready so that she can go to be with her Lord. I want to say a prayer. Heavenly Father, I do come before you in the name of Jesus, whose name's above every name. And I ask you to help me with this message that I say what you would have me to say. And that those listening would hear what you would have them to hear in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Um, I was... Um, I had a store. I've had a lot of stores. And I was at a store one day, my store. And it is the most unusual thing. It was several years ago. This looked like a Mennonite lady. She was dressed like a Mennonite. Came into my store. She walked straight up to the counter. She didn't look at anything. She just walked up to the counter to me. And she said, How many rivers are there in the Garden of God? And what are they? What do they represent? I said, there's four. She said, what do they represent? And I said, I don't know. And she said, I'll come back in a week. And I'll ask you the same question. So, in a week, here she came. She didn't look at anything. I'd never seen her before. She walked up to my counter and she said, how many rivers are in the garden of God? And what do they represent? And I said, there's four. I don't know what they represent. And she said, they represent the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Bride of Christ. And she turned and walked out. That was it. And of course, that piqued my interest. That's been quite a while ago. I think it was in 1980. Six, maybe 89. I believe it was 89. Had a lot happen in 1989 spiritually. I, the Lord really poured out a lot of information to me in 1989. But anyway, so I'm going to read a little bit of the scripture today, which I don't usually do. And I'm going to tell you the chapters I'm going to read from. I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 66, starting with verse 1. And I'm going to read from uh, Revelation 12. Starting with verse 1, I'm going to read from Revelation 14. Starting with the verse 1, if you want to get your Bible and pause this. Anyway, I'm going to start here. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you build unto me? Where is the place of my rest? For all these things has my hand made, and all these things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man I will look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and who trembleth at my word. He that killeth an ox, is this, this is prophetic, of course this is Isaiah, he that killeth an ox, is this he that slew a man, he that sacrificed a lamb, as he that cuts off a dog's neck, he that offers an oblation, as is as he that offers swine's blood. He that burns incense is as if he is blessing an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations. I'm going to stop right there for a second. You understand this is a prophetic verse about the end of time, and Jesus is fulfilling all those sacrifices and everything. So we don't need to go back to the old covenant. He wrote the new covenant in his blood. And God is telling how that makes him feel. When we go back and do things in a formal way that are not what he's called us to do. And he goes on. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear but they did evil before my eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. 
Hear the word of the Lord, you that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord, that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth and not come to bring forth? Saith the Lord, shall I cause to bring forth and shut up the womb, saith thy God? Rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her. All you that love her, rejoice for joy with her, all that you that mourn for her, that you may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolations, that you may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall you suck, and you shall be born upon her sides, and be dandled upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so will I comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. He's prophesying about a future event. If we go to Revelation 12 now, and read, it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And I personally believe that's the twelve apostles. They were the first, they were born again, they took the communion with Jesus, and he said he would drink it with them again in the kingdom. And that was what they did. They drank out of a cup when they were betrothed. In the, in the ancient Israel, they drank out of a cup with the bridegroom. And he said he would drink it again in the kingdom. And he only had the twelve there. He didn't have all his thousands of disciples there. He had the twelve. And remember, the city is four square. It's 15,000 miles high, wide, and long. And it's for the 144,000 because it's built in math. For 144,000. It says. Um, she being. With child. Travailed in, in birth. And pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold a great red dragon. Having seven heads and ten horns. And seven crowns upon his heads. Well that sounds real complex. But it's not really. Because the red dragon is the devil. We all know that. And these seven heads and ten horns are just kings of the earth. They're just kings. The beast system. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of the heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, if you realize what else he says there, the devil pursues the rest of her seed for three and a half years. If you go ahead and read the whole chapter, he, he pursues the rest of her seed for 1,260 days. And it says, now has come the kingdom of God. So this is a prophecy of the time when the kingdom of God comes. A lot of people mistakenly think that that man-child is Jesus, but John is clear. He said, Blessed is he that reads and understands the prophecy of this book, and Jesus had ascended more than 60 years prior. 
This is talking about the end of time when the kingdom of God comes. That man child is the first fruits of God being raptured to the throne, and it is the bride of Christ, the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem, who is free and is above, and is going to be the mother of all living like Eve was, and is the bride of Christ. And it's also this same group here I was going to read to you. And lo, I looked. This is Revelation 14. Lo, I looked, and a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. Now remember in, in the Old Testament it said, it was talking about when the kingdom of God comes. And this right here says, I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as if it were a new song before the throne, before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song. But the 144,000 which had been redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women. You know, Babylon the Great is the great whore. She's the woman he's talking about. They were virgins. They didn't commit spiritual adultery. These are they which follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and into the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Now, these ones have no guile or pretense. They're very real people, and they're seeking God with all their heart. They're racing for the mark of the high calling of God, and they will be the first fruits unto God. They will be the new Jerusalem. In Revelation 7, that's talking about an earthly group of Jews from the 12 tribes. See, people forget that there's a thousand-year mortal kingdom coming up. It's not an immortal kingdom for those in it because there's going to be a wolves and lions and lambs and bears and children being born. The earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So this is a physical earthly place. God told Abraham, that his seed would be as the stars of the sky and the sand of the sea. And he says in Ezekiel 36 through 39, which people do not take the Bible literal, but they, they really, if they want to understand it, they're going to have to take it as it's written because the Word of God said, no scripture is of any private interpretation. And very clearly, God says to Ezekiel, he says, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, you know, and he said, he raised up the whole house of Israel, a mighty army. He put the sinews and the bones together. And all the church did with that was make a silly song about the knee bone being connected to the thigh bone. But God was given a profound prophecy where he was going to fulfill his word to Abraham because Abraham was willing to give his only son. And he even goes on to explain it in depth. He says, I am raising you from the dead, I will put a heart of flesh in you, not for your sake, but for my sake, and you will be sorry for the things you did. So it's people that had already lived on the earth. And he's also going to raise up people from other nations because it says that they will stream up to Israel once a year. So before all that happens, there will be Armageddon, and then God is going to burn up the earth to get rid of all the filth the bioweapons and everything that mankind has done. He says, I will bring ruin to those ruining the earth. He's going to burn the earth up. He says in Jeremiah, I believe it's chapter 4. Look at chapter 1 and chapter 4. It says, I beheld the earth and it was formless and void and there was no man. It says that. It said there were so few trees that a child could write them. So he's going to completely burn the earth up because he has to because it's filthy. Then he's going to resurrect the house of Israel. Then he's going to resurrect other people that didn't have a chance with the gospel yet. 
and they're all going to learn about Jesus. And they will be mortal and having children. And it says if anybody dies at the age of 100, they'll be thought a curse. That a 100 years old will be a mere child. So they're going to live for a thousand years. And near the end of that, Satan will be loose to tempt them. And then he will be thrown into the lake of fire. And God... At the end of that thousand years, everyone will be born again. Everyone will be immortal. And they will all go into the new heavens and the new earth that God is going to make for his people. And um, that is after the thousand years. And then he's going to throw all the, the evil into the lake of fire. You know, at that point, and there will be new heavens and new earth wherein righteousness will dwell. But the people that are born again right now, the wisest thing a person can do is to run the race for the mark of the high calling of God. What better prize could you have than Jesus? He's the pearl of great price. He died for us, and in a wedding feast, the father picked out the bride, and he paid a price for her. Well, Jesus paid in full for us. And then the son goes away to prepare a place for her. But before he leaves, they drink of the wine together, and then she's married to him. And all they're going to do when they go away is to have the wedding itself, but she's already married to him. She can leave him if she wants to, but she's married to him. And they're going to drink that cup again in the heavenly kingdom. And this morning, I really believe I had an understanding that I've never heard spoken before. We've always wondered about how that Jesus, it says that, it, it, that Jesus in the church was like a husband and their wife, you know. But this morning, the thought came to me. That when, you know, I had a dream you don't know about, but I, but I got to taste of the Holy Spirit wine, one drink of it. But, you know, our wine skins can't handle all the Holy Spirit. We have to have new wine skins or glorified bodies to have the whole Holy Spirit. So I believe that when the bride gets to heaven, she's going to drink that wine with Jesus in the kingdom. And he is full of the Spirit of God, and we've not been able to be. But when we get our glorified bodies, we are going to become one with him by being completely filled for the first time ever with the Holy Spirit and we'll all shout for joy. There'll be a great circle dance. Our Lord and Savior is coming very soon. It's not very long. The tribulation will start in 2024, somewhere in February, probably around the 27th, so... We have a little time to prepare, but it's wisdom to go ahead and seek God with all your heart and to really make sure you're right with Him and to ask Him to help you hear His voice and never listen to the voice of another because voices are everywhere alike, right this minute, all over, everywhere. There's people preaching that weren't called to preach. There's people that's not read the Word preaching. And because people are really wanting to know what's going on, they're listening to these people and they're getting confused. The first thing we have to do is seek God, be born again by asking Jesus in your heart and repenting and then reading his word and following him as he guides you, starting the New Testament. So we're in a time unlike any other. We're going to see this age end and the new one start. We're walking from time into eternity. There's no greater blessing that we could ever have. I hope y'all have a wonderful day, and it's been a, a great joy talking with you. If you have any questions, you can comment, or you can send me private questions to Richard A N D Judy 333 at gmail.com. Have a blessed day.